Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today I'm going to talk to you about how xylem sap ascends some of the tallest trees in the world. Now, how can it do that? How can it defy gravity? There's no like secret mechanical pumps in there pulling it up. There's no like chain of ants with like little buckets and ropes like pulling the water up. Now, it's a combination of pressure and some of the physical properties of water. <laughs> and so, sorry to take the mystery away, but let's get into that conversation and see what, what comes of it. And so xylem is um, a special type of vascular tissue that plants have that's made up of some interesting cells. If you remember, the cells are, are tracheids. They're rather thin and tapered. They have pits in them and some uh, vessel elements. And so those are like straw-like cells that are very thick that, and they have secondary cell walls. And so they basically allow for like pipes that allow for bulk flow of water to move in a plant, all for the, all for the price of free. And so that, that's kind of interesting. And so sap moves upward through uh, the steel in, in the uh, root, up through the vascular uh, tissue in the stem, and then all the way into the, the leaf via veins. And then water leaves that through those openings in the lower part of the epidermis called stomata, and that's called transpiration. And so transpiration, this is the key point for the, this whole video, transpiration provides the pull. So when water is evaporating from the leaf, because of the fact that water is cohesive and it's all sticking together like one long chain, as soon as one water molecule evaporates, it pulls all the ones up with it. And so pull means pressure. And if you're evaporating, you're creating a negative pressure, which is going to pull. Basically, you're going to pull the water up because of transpiration. And so that's what's happening. And so the, the flow of water transported up the xylem replaces the water lost through transpiration. And so that's how it all works. And so well, you know, how important is this? Well, it's been said that a maple tree in the summer can lose, look at this, 200 liters of water per hour in the summer. That's tremendous. You know, how, how's it able to live through that? Well, maple, li maple leaves take chances because they're very broad. And so they, they're found in deciduous forests, which get a lot of rainfall. And so that's how they, they roll. <laughs> and so there are some other plants if you recall uh, the, in the tropic area. Now, wouldn't you like, if you were a tree, wouldn't you like to have a big blade like this to capture the most sunlight? Sure, but you know the consequences of this trade-off is that there's a tremendous amount of transpirational loss when you have big, broad leaves like this. And so it's tough to get away with it. Here uh, in California, a lot of our trees are needle-like, like this, like pine, pine trees and uh, then there's fir trees, and we have redwood trees, and so as a result, these this morphology reduces transpirational loss. Also, the leaves are a little bit thicker too, which reduce transpirational losses. That's kind of interesting. And so, when we're talking about the movement of water up a tree, uh, we're talking about it's mainly to do with transpiration. Transpiration, again, just restating that point, is transpiration is the evaporation of water from the leaves, or the needles in this case, and as a result of it, water is then pulled up because it's in one continuous flow. And so the water is being drawn up, being drawn up. And so that is why water is being pulled in through osmosis, lateral transport, and then it goes up through the wood all sapwood all the way to the top. So it's transpiration. And it's also the physical properties of water. Because of the fact that the water is cohesive, it's, it's hydrogen bonding that ultimately is uh, causing that to, to occur. So it's, so it's cohesion and adhesion that's, that's causing that. And so let's, let's take a look at that. OK. <laughs> That's that's okay. Let's let's do this. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to allow me to. Let's do something here really quickly. We'll go here. 
<laughs> Sorry about that. And uh, we go back here, and then go here, here, and then here. We should be fine now. And so, uh, sap can rise pretty far. <laughs> Sorry, there's always, it's always some technical difficulty. Notice how I roll with it and am not affected. I anticipate it. Um, the xylem sap can go really high up a tree, and it's remarkable. You know, in redwood trees, look at this, 379 feet tall. That's incredible. It's the tallest living things ever on the, on the earth, defying gravity. It's incredible. And so, you know, tra let me go back. So transpiration is mainly a daytime event because the sun uh, is providing um, the heat necessary to lower the water potential in the atmosphere and therefore drive transpiration. So it's a daytime phenomena, especially when you consider that the guard cells are, are open during the day. Okay, so it's mainly daytime transpiration. Yeah. But at night, as you can see, look at this. Here's nighttime out on a farm um, in Vermont. And so at nighttime, this is kind of an interesting thing. When transpiration is very, very low, the root cells can still expend some energy, especially right over here in the steel, to pump in mineral elements into the into the xylem. So check this out. If the root at night is pumping in mineral elements right in here, it's still the mineral elements are accumulating right here. So it's becoming very hypertonic. You see that? It's very hypertonic at night. That means that as a result of this area being hypertonic, that means more water can be drawn into the steel. And so it's not being pulled up this time by transpiration. Remember how we said that transpiration was negative pressure when the, when the leaves have water evaporate, it pulls the water up. What I'm saying now is, at nighttime, sometimes water enters the root into the steel and pushes. There's a difference. It pushes the water up. So that's a positive pressure. You're like, what are you talking about? I'm talking about how water can enter because of the fact that at nighttime there's an accumulation of salt in the, in the xylem. And so if water then enters into this, it's going to push up. It's going to push water up the root. And if water is pushed up the root, what this is called is root pressure. It's the accumulation, as I said, of minerals in the steel, which then lowers the water potential. That, that means that water is going to go from high water potential in the cortex into the steel. So as water moves in, it pushes it pushes the, the water and forces the water up the tree or the, or the, or the herb. And so this root pressure causes um, gatation to occur right here. In other words, there's more water entering the leaf at nighttime than there is uh, water transpiring. And so as a result, there's fluid that accumulates on, on, on the leaf as a result of it. So at nighttime when the transpiration is low, the roots accumulate this salty environment, water then goes in and pushes the some of the water up. So it's positive pressure and that's called root pressure. Now I'm, I'm mentioning it because it's, it's fairly interesting. Uh, root pressure is not the major mechanism of uh, xylem sap. That would be transpiration. And, and root pressure can force water only up a few meters. It's not going to push it up in, into a, t a tall tree. And so, and some plants don't even have it. And so, as it turns out, transpiration is the real uh, pull as opposed to push. It, and it's the cohesion of water due to the hydrogen bonding. So it's water properties uh, and adhesion to the cell wall and transpiration that's really causing xylem sap to move up. So there it is, transpiration but a little bit of root pressure as well, as it, as it turns out. So wh why does water, again, move up this way? Why does it move up through the, through the vascular tissue, through the xylem? What's causing it? 
And you're like, well, as you said, transpiration. Well, why is the water transpiring from the stomata? Because take a look. It's going from high water potential to low water potential. So it's a water potential gradient. That's why water moves. And so outside in the air, it's really, really, really negative. And so in the soil, I know it's negative 0.3 megapascals, but that's higher than negative 100, isn't it? So water is entering into the root through the, via through the root hairs, and then it's moving either symplastically or apoplastically into the xylem, and then through cohesion and adhesion to the cell wall, i.e. capillary action, cohesion and adhesion, the, the water is able to move up, 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 like this, and then it transpires. So transpiration provides the pull. <clears throat> What's really, really cool is you can get into the detail of this. Um, like, do you see here in the uh, mesophyll of a leaf, if you look at the cross section, do you notice here there's so much airspace in between? And so not only does that allow for uh, the circulation of gases, throughout the leaf. But that also causes an increase in water loss from those mesophyll cells. Because water is moving from those cells into those air spaces. Like, check this out, it's very negative inside the air spaces. And so water then is drawn, let me see if I can illustrate this. If water keeps going into those air spaces, then it keeps moving in there, moving in here. And so ultimately, the xylem is giving, it, giving the water up to the bundle sheath and to the mesophyll because of that. And then water is able to transpire and leave through the stomata. So there's one big continuous flow that's being sort of propelled by the sun. The sun is kind of generating that solar power needed to uh, increase transpiration. And then there's other physical factors as well. Like, for example, if it's a windy day, that's going to also increase transpiration. And so Transpirational pull of xylem sap, it has to do with that uh, pressure, that negative pressure of the water being pulled up, and it also has to do with cohesion and adhesion. It helps to fight against gravity. And so, you know, it, the, the interest never stops here. And it's like the tracheids themselves, the vessel elements in the trachea, the fact that there's such small diameter means that the water is in greater contact with the hydrophilic. Uh, walls of the plant. And so there's even a greater attraction and then even more adhesion, even more pull. And it increases the rate as well because of physically um, smaller diameter. And so ultimately the sun is the reason. How about that? The sun is the reason. So you can ask your friends this. Why does the water travel up a tree? And it's, it's solar powered. At least bulk flow is. And when I say bulk flow, I mean like the water flowing in these straw-like xylem cells. And it, it only depends on pressure. And it's negative pressure, right, that's, that's causing that, the whole water pulling it up, pulling it up. And, it, and it's free. Look at that. The, the plant expends none of its own metabolic energy to lift water up against gravity. It's tremendous. It happens all for free. The sunlight drives transpiration and therefore causes the water to evaporate from the mesophyll cells um, and then on high humidity days, maybe not as much as it turns out. Um, wow. Then here's this, finally, here's this picture of, you know, as you know, I have kind of a favorite tree, the redwood tree, but gee, look at this incredible oak tree and the silhouette that it creates at, at dusk uh, here in the savanna. So it's quite beautiful. And so I hope you enjoyed this conversation that we have had today about the ascent of xylem sap. Thanks for watching.